what's up, buddy? I'm Jason, and you're watching my channel, Micro Investor. All right, so I touched on the subject before in the past, one of my early videos, um, but I want to bring it up again. I want to bring up uh, one of my favorite sodas, Dr. Pepper, and how they're actually the same company as Keurig. Um, this is a company that actually merged uh, a while back ago. I think the merge went final in July of, of 2018. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people don't know that they're actually the same company, Keurig and Dr. Pepper. And there's a lot more to this company than, uh, than you might just think. Um, there is a lot, actually, that they have for sale. Uh, and I wanted to touch on that in this uh in this video and be a little bit more detailed than my last video on this subject. So earlier in 2018, I was already invested uh, into Dr. Pepper. Uh, I had bought the stock because, you know, I already owned shares of Coca-Cola and Pepsi. And then I figured, why not Dr. Pepper? Because Dr. Pepper is the third largest uh, soda company and, you know, it's also a great brand. So I, ha I had them just to kind of just, you know, have all three in my portfolio. I know a lot of people don't like doing that, but that's kind of, a weird style of my investing I figured you know if you can't beat them might as well have them all uh, so that's what I did uh, um, that was kind of like my strategy with it and uh, there's a lot of investors that actually that had Dr. Pepper and they actually um, they sold out when the merge was coming because they didn't want any uh, you know any capital gains taxes with the merger between Dr. Pepper and Keurig because there was a pretty big dividend that was going to be paid out. There was a certain amount of uh, stock that you were going to get from the merge. And then there was a certain amount of, of, of a cash dividend that you were going to get. And that cash dividend was uh, something that, you know, people didn't want to deal with with the capital gains. And then, you know, getting invested into a new company, they decided to sell out. Uh, I was one of the people that actually stayed. I didn't have a very large holding of them. So to me, it wasn't really worthwhile to sell. So that's the story there. Um, so now I'm gonna get more into this, more into the actual company. What makes uh, Keurig Dr. Pepper so interesting is when you think about like the other two big soda companies. You know, they're try, they're all trying to branch out of being just soda, um, but they're they're tr they're spending so much money in trying to and uh, trying to uh, be successful with coffee. Uh, when you think of like Coca Cola with uh, Costa Coffee and stuff. Uh, they're spending they're spending billions to try to be in this in the coffee market, um, and the interesting thing is about with Keurig Dr Pepper, they don't have to spend billions to try to be successful in that business because every single major coffee company wants to actually do business with them because what uh, what they actually have is those K cups, um, you know what you put into the Keurigs. That is like that's a proprietary item. That is something that um, that you know they have a patent on, and companies um, are paying them big bucks to actually have those. And those K cups by themselves um, generate billions in revenue a year. So not just like so not just the soda. Those little K cups produce billions in revenue a year. For this company and that is still a growing thing you think about every single hotel out there is you know interested in getting keurigs now keurig is um it's like the more convenient way to get coffee these days and uh it's still a booming business there's still so much going on there um and keurig has like such a great relationship with amazon where they actually sell a lot of these things uh, or have been always selling a lot of these things um but now you know keurig has those k cups have uh you know, a lot of a lot of space in the aisles now uh, uh, in the coffee sections. Um, they got brands like you know Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, uh, Folgers. They're all on K cups. Uh, so you think about a brand like that that can have all these other big companies and uh, have them want to do business with them. And let's not forget about Dr. Pepper's brand before the merge. Dr. Pepper was uh, you know not just Dr. Pepper it was uh, Seven Up. Uh, a W root beer, uh, Canada Dry ginger ale, uh, Snapple. Uh, they also had uh, Mott's, the popular uh, juice company that uh, also makes applesauce and even fruit snacks. They were all part of Dr Pepper that they had in this, uh, you know, that, that is part of this new company, this uh, Keurig Dr Pepper. So the big thing for Keurig uh, for their interest to be 
you know, part of uh, Dr. Pepper was that uh, Dr. Pepper is a big distribution. You know, they they have to keep their products stocked into, you know, convenience stores and supermarkets all the time. And, you know, there's a big distribution in with like sodas and stuff. Um, so that was real big for Keurig because, you know, you get a company that has this sort of relationship and you can get in on these spaces with them, you know, and then that produces more companies that actually want to do business with you when you, you know, you have that kind of relationship. I really wanted to feature, you know, this company in this video because um, it is a stock that I've actually really liked and I think it's amazing that a, uh, that a company can have a relationship with competitors and do business with them and distribution with them. You know, have, having a company that can distribute uh, Starbucks with Dunkin' Donuts and uh, uh, Folgers and all that, to be able to distribute uh, those brands is pretty amazing. And also to have, you know, such a, um, you know, a big soda, big brand of soda as well, um, that makes the stock very interesting. If you're trying to find information about them, uh, this company has only been around since uh, July 2018. Uh, so a lot of the information that you would find from brokerage, um, they try to piece together to different companies um, and you don't really get that much of accurate information. It's kind of hard to really piece it piece it all together. But um, what I can tell you is that they have a $37 billion market cap and their dividend is like a 2.3%. Um, there's a lot of growth too, in my opinion, with that dividend. I, I feel that it has a lot of opportunity to, to grow over time. And I also think that there's, there's still growth in the stock. I think this stock has a lot of... Uh, a lot of potential because there's so much that they can still offer and get into. Um, but anyways, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. I have new videos talking about the stock market all the time. Thank you for watching.